Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a nurse and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to administer Depo-Provera intramuscularly, um, which means it's going to go into a muscle. You might also hear it um, just being called IM injection. Um, so I'm going to show you what supplies you're going to need first. You're going to have your alcohol swab or wipe. You're going to need a needle. Um, I'm using a 23 gauge one inch needle here. You're gonna need a syringe. I am using a three milliliter syringe. You're gonna need your medicine. And of course, a Band-Aid. Now, a good rule of thumb is I have some crazy hair and I have short bits in the front that sometimes get in my face that I'm prone to touch my hair and move it out of the way. But you wanna keep your hands clean during this whole process, so, I would recommend is that you go ahead and pull it up. <clears throat> if you have super long hair, you can pull it up completely, but I just need to get my bangs out of my face. So I'm just gonna pull it up like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hand sanitize. I did wash my hands um, properly before this video, but I thought moving you guys to watch me wash my hands would just be a really long drawn out process. So I have some hand sanitizer here. That I'm just gonna spray. And I'm gonna make sure that I get everywhere to make sure that my hands are still clean. And don't worry, if you do end up touching something, you can always re-hand sanitize or re-wash your hands. Now, I'm going to show you where you can put this. Um, there's two places typically that you can do at home for IM injections. One is the typical one, it's your shoulder. Um, we use this a lot in the clinic when we're administering the depot shots. And then also it's what you mostly know is for the flu shots or any um, vaccines, they kind of go right up in here. You just go straight in into this muscle here. Um, it should be noted that you might feel some soreness um, because again, it's going into a muscle. So I would pick a side that you don't necessarily want to, um, they don't necessarily sleep on, or if you're a left first right, um, maybe do the one that you're not dominant on. Um, so that way it's, it doesn't hurt every time you move your arm. Um, or you can do your thigh. Um, I do have two band-aids on my thigh, so ignore that. I'm filming a couple of these videos today. And so these are previous folks. Um, so on your thigh, you have two muscles um, that kind of let me put you back down, sorry. They kind of go like this over your thigh. Um, so to make sure that you get a uh, muscle, what I usually like to recommend is you're gonna wanna do the top, but you wanna go either this way or this way on the top. Now, I don't know about you, but the inner thigh sounds definitely more sensitive and more painful. So I would recommend the outer portion of your thigh. So go top to the out um, side and a good rule of thumb is to use your hand, put it over the area, and that's what you want to clean. You want to clean that entire area where your hand is kind of at, so that way you know that no matter where you're putting that needle in that general area, you got a clean spot. Um, because if you just clean a tiny little spot, like a tiny little wipe, you might come back to that area and miss it, and then you administer the medicine in a dirty spot, and no one wants that. Um, so. Like I said, I would probably put the hand here and clean this whole area and administer it kind of here on the top, but kind of on the outer portion. Now I know I just touched a couple of things. I know I scratched my face, I touched my thigh with that whole conversation and touched my thumb. So if you do something like that, like I said, no big deal, just re-hand sanitize. All right. So I'm gonna administer in my arm because as you saw, my thigh has already seen a couple of injections. Um, but it might be difficult for you to kind of get into this area. So the thigh is a good option as well. So you're gonna get your alcohol swab. You wanna make sure that your shirt is up um, so it doesn't fall back down. Again, if it does fall down, you can just reclean the area just like you reclean your hands and what I usually do is I start in the center and I work my way out in a circular motion, kind of like a spiral. 
because if you ever have somebody go like this, you're gonna possibly be getting the dirtiness. Just all you're really doing is spreading the dirtiness because you're touching dirty, going back over clean, and you're just dragging the the dirt and the bacteria around. But if you do the spiral method, it's you're touching dirty and you're cleaning it and you're just continuously getting to dirty and you're never going back over the clean section. So now that I'm doing that, I'm gonna let that dry because alcohol in a wound stings and once you use a needle to inject this medicine, it is then a wound and it's never fun. You're already gonna have to poke yourself you don't want the burning of the alcohol to happen as well. Um, so you can go ahead and now take your syringe and your needle and open them. I'm gonna start with my syringe here so I can show you some things on that. Um, first, I like to show you guys, take this out. You can see that my, pull it down a little bit more, there we go. Like I said, I have a three mil syringe, so that's as far as it goes. The bigger lines, that is a half a milliliter, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, and three milliliter. And then you have these little ones. Those are 0.1, so if you look at this landmark, that is a half a milliliter, or 0.5. So then this little one's 0.4, that one's 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and then this other big one up here at the top that's zero so if you ever have to use the point system or whatever just know that that is zero not one i'm also going to take my plunger out and i'm going to show you real fast it usually picks up great maybe on my red shirt there we go um you can see that it has kind of this lump on it so when you're Put, lining it up with these lines, what you're actually wanting to line up is this edge, the flat edge, not this top hump. Again, the flat edge. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that back in there. And when you're and then when you're holding this syringe, make sure you don't touch this whole section right up in here, especially this little bit that's sticking out because that's what connects to your needle. And if you do touch it, that dirtiness and bacteria and everything can then get into the needle, get into the medicine, get into you, and then you can get an infection. Now, when opening your needle, again, they all kind of open like this, how they split. And you just want to make sure that you don't touch this end, because that end is what's going to connect to your syringe. They're There's not a super wrong way to open this, because you can see here, this end doesn't really peel away that much. This end peeled away very easily. So it, the way that you open it is pretty self-explanatory when you have it in front of your face and not in the camera. Um, so you see that my syringe has these two circles. My needle has this one circle. So the needle is going to go in between the two circles. And then you're just going to screw that on there. And then you know that it's connected. Now yours may come already connected. That's fine. That means that step is already done for you. You're going to go ahead and sit this down now. And you're going to take your vial. Um, yours is probably a different color. This is not actually Depo. It's just normal saline. So it's clear. Um, but Depo needs to be reconstituted. So you need to shake it up a little bit. So that way it mixes it all together. Okay, and then yours also comes with this cap. You're gonna wanna go ahead and flick that off. Now, because like I said, mine has normal saline in it because it's not actually Depo, so my cap was not actually on this vial, so I need to clean it. Um, and if while you were removing that cap, if you graze the top of this, no big deal. You just take another alcohol swab and you just clean this top part really vigorously so that way you know it's clean. Okay. Now my needle has this um, recapping system. You're just gonna wanna move this down so that way it's not in the way of your needle when you're gonna go um, 
suck up the fluid. Um, when you are doing this, you're gonna want to bring up air. Um, so I am Depo, it's one milliliter of fluid. So you're gonna wanna bring up one milliliter of air. So you can see here, there's my one. It is for this big line. So I'm going to line it up to this flat part, not the bump. And then there you go. So the reason why you're sucking up air is because then that causes pressure in this vial and it makes it way easier to then um, bring the fluid up into this needle. So you're gonna go ahead and uncap your needle, get your vial, you're gonna stick the needle in this um, dark gray center. The rest of it is hard, and so you wouldn't be able to poke the needle through that anyways. Um, it doesn't have to be a smack dab in the middle. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's at least in that squishy part. And you're gonna go ahead, because my vial already was tampered with, it wants to go ahead and push air into it. Yours probably won't do that. Um, you're gonna go ahead and just um, put in the air and then you're gonna go ahead and tilt it upside down and you can see how even before before I tilted it upside down it wanted to just continue to alleviate the pressure that's in this vial um, <clears throat> and that's what makes it so easy like I didn't have to pull this plunger up at all I just did it automatically and that's why we have you go ahead and pull up the air beforehand however if you look you can see my needle is outside of that fluid and so it's only pulling up air it's not actually pulling up any of the medicine so if that happens no big deal just again put all that back in there bring your needle down and what i usually like to do is i tilt the vial right here so that way when i'm getting down to the very last drop of fluid it puddles down here at the bottom and then i instead of leaving it leaving my needle straight like this I'll go ahead and tilt it like that. So that way my needle is off, is also all the way down here. And that way I know I'm getting every last drop. So you can go ahead and draw that up. All right. Now, if you get a little bit that comes out, that's fine. And you're now going to flip your syringe so that way you know all of there is up here and your fluid's down here. And then you're going to push slowly on this syringe so that way you get all of the air out. And what you'll see is you'll see a tiny little drop of the medicine come out of the tip of this needle. And that's how you know all of the air is out. There you go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and recap my needle now if you're going to recap your needle make sure you don't touch the end of it where my blue finger is because as you're recapping if you do it too hard the needle can just break this plastic bit the actual cap and it can keep going and then you're going to stab your finger and that's not fun now i'm recapping this because i want to open my band-aid so that way i know when i'm done my band-aid's ready to go for me So now I just have to take this part off and then slap it on my deltoid. Now you can see my shoulder is, or my sleeve is kind of creeping down, but it's not in the area where I'm going to administer, so it's fine. But if it did start to cover your shoulder, you could just take another alcohol swab again, clean it, and let it dry. Now, I'm going to go ahead and recap again. I'm going to turn my body so you can actually see what's going on here. And you're just going to go in straight into your shoulder here. Um, you can kind of like, you flex a little, you can kind of maybe, I don't have much muscle, but a lot of times you can kind of see like this little divot here and you kind of know just to go right in the middle there and that way you don't go too low or too high. I have it easy, I have this fun little freckle and I just kind of go a little above that. So I'm going to go ahead 
It might be also easy to do it this way in front of a mirror because as I'm doing it, I am noticing it's a lot easier to look in the viewfinder than it is to actually try to look at my actual arm. Um, so you're just going to go ahead. And if you have somebody at home that wants to do this for you, that's fine too. You're just going to want to make sure, because I know it's going to be hard for me to show you once it's in me, you're going to want to make sure that you get the needle in all the way so that way you know it's in the muscle. Um, so you can see this little white tip at the end of the blue part. You're going to go all the way into your arm until your needle is completely covered and all you see is that white tip. So, all right, here we go. You're going to go in straight. And then you're just going to push this medicine in slowly. And take the needle out and voila. And then you can go ahead and cap your needle so it's safe. You can see here my recapping system for this needle that it comes with is not the best. I physically cannot cover this needle anymore. So once I put my band-aid on, I'm actually going to recap that better to make it safer for me. So let me just go ahead. And make sure you don't touch this white part of the band-aid because then it defeats the purpose because band-aid's no longer clean. But if you have to touch the sticky part, that's fine. So there you go. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. Take this cap and again, recap it because it's just safer that way. Um, now a good way to dispose of this is in a laundry detergent jug, a uh, milk jug, um, a spaghetti sauce jar, anything that it's not gonna puncture through because when you're taking out the trash or when the garbage, um, the garbage men are out collecting the trash, you don't want this to accidentally puncture through the bag and stab you or any other employee that might be handling your trash. Um, so yeah, just do that. Um, if you are doing this regularly at home you can keep that jug around and fill it up completely before throwing it away um, it is really a good idea to at least write sharps on it so people know maybe um, and then also you can bring it to a clinic and we can also properly dispose of it for you um, so yeah that's pretty much how you do intramuscular um, injections like i said if you're going to go into the thigh you would go and you would have just put that needle right in right there the same way you would have done your arm. Um, I hope that was educational and you guys enjoyed. Bye.